Death doesn't scare us. It doesn't scare me because we have a mission. 2016, they said, well, you have two, three years. Yeah. Well, I said, well, what are you going to do? You have to come up with a plan, and you don't plan for certain things in life. So when they diagnosed me with uh, geoblastoma, three centimeters, I said, well, okay. We have a mission, and our mission was to figure out what we can do. And, you know, Ben Franklin said, you don't have but two things that are inevitable in life, death and taxes. Ben Franklin was right about one of them. You only live once and you only die once. So what can we do to make it the best? We started looking at the different aspects of identification, health, and we came up with the idea that why can't we be proactive in the way we live our lives? So we basically got together, I got the best people in the world. We identified certain areas, and that being health and identification. Why can't we automate them? So rewind it a bit. When they diagnosed me, I said, well, Okay, leave the government. I worked for the government in Afghanistan, U.S. Embassy, as the commercial attache. And we saw a lot of people faking identification. They would come in, they would apply for a grant using their biometrics, fingerprints, facial. And I said to myself, well, what are we going to do? We have to catch these people and we have to stop them. So we came up with a methodology to identify a person using something you carry around with you. Anybody have a clue? What do you carry around with you but you never leave behind when you're out there? Well, I see, I see one person over there with a phone. Okay, so you have a phone. But this phone has a million times more power than the mission of Mars, so they say. I don't know if that's true. But you don't leave your vascular biometrics the surface of your bone biometrics, your heartbeat, your blood flow. And I said, well, how do we get a device, an internet of things, to provide the ability to read your vascular biometrics? So we developed a way, we wrote a patent, and in 290 days, our patent was issued to identify you in one in 7.5 billion. You don't leave your face behind. You don't want to leave your finger up like Merkel did, and take your fingerprint off television. So we avoid all these things. Nobody can take your biometrics, and we can identify you. Having said that, we went out and looked at another use, and we said, well, what can we do with this to help, help make a person better? And we basically came out with an idea to utilize health biometrics after talking with the Kanagawa government in Tokyo, Japan. They said, what can you do with your identification? I said, well, we're an identity company. We're not a health company. I don't know what you're talking about. But when I started thinking about it, I said, well, we're scanning the vascular heartbeat blood flow. We're scanning everything but the flesh and the blood, basically. As of today, after working with the Kanagawa government, the first meeting we went to, and we, 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 we started looking at this, we've identified 26 markers and nine diseases. So instead of waiting till you get sick, the kind of government said, you feel you're coming on with a flu, and then your body reacts, and then you get sick. It's called mebio. It's an Eastern philosophy of between healthy baseline and being sick. So it's proactive care. And we think we can get the top 100 markers of what's going to be causing this cancer or that cancer or maybe Ebola, it's a, they're all blood. And what we also learned, uh, I believe I heard a conversation that it was diabetic or if you're pre-diabetes. Why can't we identify these things with stage zero, like with my cancer? <sighs> Instead of stage two, three, four. So personally, we took a mission we came up with a solution, not just for 
sensing the markers, but we're adding chemosensory, which is the scent smell. If a dog can smell for bombs or money, these are all things that drive commerce. Why can't we do this for medical? Why can't we embed an IoT one micron instead of a physio, for those of us that have children, then you do an ultrasound, make it one micron, put it in a phone, an Apple phone, an Android, put it in a facial device that you can read, put it in a body scanner. So as our patent said, we said, we want to identify any living body part because sometimes in the Middle East, they lose their hands. Sometimes you're born with no hands. So we need to be able to identify anybody with absolute certainty, 1.75 million. And we want to be able to keep them healthy. And if we can do 100 markers and 25 diseases, and we're proactive in our medical care, we feel that this, instead of being reactive, is going to be a lot better. Working with the Center for Disease Control, CDC, we said, you're getting faxes, you're marking this. These type of things allow us to be proactive. I don't want to be chasing somebody who's sick. I want them to know when they get sick, they're scanning their phone, they're IDing themselves, however you want to do it. Their glasses are doing it. You can build it into anything. Build it into a wall at an airport to ID. No more long lines at the airports. Wouldn't that be nice? I think so. So on a good note, we can automate the health and identification systems to better mankind. Instead of utilizing this to check my Facebook or my Twitter feed that the guys over here are doing, we can make this a tool to make our lives better. And I think that's where we want to take this in life. And we will finish with the chemosensory, adding that so it can smell when you have cancer. Dog can smell. Why can't I teach a chip? I can smell bombs. Why can't we teach it to smell for diabetes, the infrared, to, to look for diabetes? To smell for alcohol, if you're driving and you can sense it, your, your rate is this. Because we, we, we all don't talk about our health. We don't tell the truth. We don't t How many of us know our history of our health, our parents? Not many of us. I know I don't. My father died of cancer. So, <laughs> forgive me if I get emotional. <laughs> Making the world a better place is simply our mission. I have a mission, the team, I have the best team in the world. So making that team finish the job and helping others is the key. Thank you.